Hi, I'm Dr. Cherry Brandstater, and I have been practicing family medicine with Beaver Medical Group for about 25 years now. And I am accompanied by a couple of my partners. I would like for them to introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Dr. Frank Lee. I'm a gastroenterologist. I have been practicing at Beaver Medical Clinic for more than 10 years, and my clinic is in Highland. I'm Dr. Daniel Flaming. I'm a family doctor at the Redlands office, and I've been with Beaver Medical for two years. So that makes two of us in the family medicine department. And as family medicine people, we tend to try to keep up with preventive care. Absolutely. It's always better to prevent something than to have to go in and try to fix it later. Mm -hmm. I know that when I bring up some of the preventive care um, procedures, patients go, okay, okay. I get to the colon cancer screening and they go, oh, and I hear a groan. Do you right. ever hear anything like that? Definitely. It's testing that's a little more challenging for patients to accept and to get them to be willing to do. So we want to remove as many of those roadblocks as we can. Um, and some of that is to give some information. Um, we have found that about one in 20 Americans will develop colon cancer. Very common. That's a pretty high percentage. It is the third highest cancer diagnosis in the U.S. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that. Mm -hmm. uh, they think of breast and lung. Well, colon cancer is right next to it. Also, it is the second leading cancer death cause, both for men and for women. Mm -hmm. And so we need to keep those things in mind um, as we help our patients. Dr. Lee, um, why do people get cancer? Are there risk factors? So the two main risk factors for colon cancer are age and family history. Uh, majority of colon cancer are detected or diagnosed after age 50. However, there is a recent trend in, in the United States that there is an increased uh, diagnosis of colon cancer even before age 50. The other main risk factors is family history. The two most common genetic syndromes are familial adenomatous polyposis or Lynch syndrome. But just by having a first degree relative diagnosed with colon cancer before age 60, increase the risk of colon cancer, and those patients should be screened uh, before age 50. So it's important for people to know their family history and to mm -hmm. talk about these things. Um, I can't do anything about my genes. Um, are there things that are uh, risk factors that are preventable or that patients can modify to decrease their risks? Certainly, there are a few other risk factors that are modifiable. Um, uh, smoking is a major risk factor for colon cancer. Uh, obesity, metabolic syndromes uh, increase the risk of colon cancer. And a low fiber diet, high red meat uh, intake uh, do increase risk of colon cancer. Can you give us some good reasons to do screening? So screening, the purpose of, of screening, um, especially for colon cancer or all types of screening, is to detect the cancer in an early stage. So if we can detect cancer in an early stage, the treatment is more successful and the prognosis is much better. Uh, however, for uh, colon cancer screening, in addition to the screening part, um, colonoscopy can also remove polyps before they uh, become cancer. So it's also a preventive measure uh, in addition to the screening uh, part of it. So what are the acceptable forms of screening? So the most recent U.S. Preventive Services Task Force recommend a few strategies for colon cancer screening, um, and then they are uh, colonoscopy, uh, sigmoidoscopy, and stool-based testing, uh, such as fecal immunochemical testing. The task force do not recommend uh, any particular one over the other. Um, the task force is saying that all strategies are good strategies, and the best one for that particular patient is the one that the patient is willing uh, to undergo. Okay, you mentioned fecal occult um, blood testing. Uh, Dr. Fleming, what does that mean, and how do we do it at Beaver? Yeah, so this is a, a stool card that they take home, and they use a little brush to take a you know a, a small brushing of their of their stool and, and kind of from a distance. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And then they then they'll uh, send it back uh, either by mail or drop it back off to the lab, and uh, we'll test for uh, for blood in, in the on the card in the stool. Okay. How do you decide 
which test to do? Well, if the patient's agreeable to doing any testing, all of the testing, I would recommend a colonoscopy because that allows you to see the entire colon mm -hmm. and then to intervene to, to remove any polyps or, or cancers that are seen right there. Um, but it really is a discussion between the doctor and the patient about what, what their preferences are, uh, what they're willing to do. And it all, also involves their, you know, some issues like transportation and their general health, what tests might be better for them. Right, because if they have a full colonoscopy, they have to have a driver. Let's go back to the UG factor. How do you talk a patient through their reticence to get the testing done? Well, I, I recognize that it's a, a common issue, so I just embrace it and address it and, and, you know, generally make a joke about it and say, you know, it's not the most fun thing to talk about, it's not the most fun thing to do, but try to highlight the importance of it. And, you know, I sometimes bring up my experience with uh, patients over the years where uh, we've found um, polyps or colon cancers at a very early stage and, and we know we've, we've saved a life, we've changed a life. And also some of the unpleasant, very sad stories we've had where patients, um, for whatever reason, uh, had their colon cancer found at a, a late stage when they were having symptoms. And, and that time it's, it's very hard to treat and, and sometimes fatal. So. Absolutely. I've had those sad stories, as I'm sure you have too, Dr. Mm -hmm. Lee. Are there protocols for colon screening, and if so, what are they? For patients at average risk, we recommend starting at, at 50. Um, people that have a higher family history rate, uh, a, a higher a cancer in their family, colon cancer or, or advanced colon polyp, might rec be recommended to go earlier, and so mm -hmm. that should be discussed with their, with their doctor about when to start. But the, the general recommendation is 50. Okay, and how often do you repeat that? Uh, it depends on the test. Uh, if you're doing a, a stool-based test, it would be annual. Mm -hmm. If it's a, a sigmoidoscopy, it would be every five years. A colonoscopy uh, would be every 10 years if it's normal, which, which I'd sell uh, as an advantage for the colonoscopy. It's less, less often. Dr. Lee, um, what are some of the risks with the procedures, and how frequently do they occur? I believe colonoscopy overall is a fairly safe procedure, but there are certain risks associated with it. I think the main risk is associated with sedation. Uh, sedation may potentially affect the heart and the lungs, so therefore the, the patients, they are monitored constantly during the procedure as far as the blood pressure, the heart rate, and the oxygen saturation. Uh, the other main risk is perforation, which is injury to the lining of the colon. It can be caused by either the passage of the scope itself or, or the use of instrument uh, in removing mm -hmm. a large polyp. Uh, however, overall, the risk of perforation is low. Um, in multiple studies, it was quoted to be less than one out of a thousand or less than 0.1%. Uh, that's excellent. Um, I refer a lot of patients to you, and I get back the actual referral with scribbled notes all over it. And one of those um, that I appreciate is that I see that you look into their record um, to make sure whether or not they have heart issues. So you're going into the procedure already knowing those things and prepared for them. So I'd like to thank both of you for participating today. I feel like it's such an honor to be able to practice with people of such high standing. Um, and for those patients who have been watching and listening today, we just want you to know that our deepest desire for you is to have a long, healthy life free from colon cancer. So if there's anything we can do to help you along that path, that's why we're here. Thank you for listening.